Unfrequented World, Pinpointer Girl, and Gage. We're heading off to the colonial spot today. We're going to spend three hours digging musket balls and any other treasures we can find. So we made a rookie mistake, guys. We um, brought Pinpointer Girl's pointer and we didn't check the batteries in it before we left. And I had a full set. I left them in the back of the car. So two mistakes. Look at that. That is the teeniest little button. And it actually has a nice design on it. So definitely colonial. The shank is missing on the back, unfortunately. That is tiny, tiny, tiny though. Smallest one I've ever found. But look at the design. Very intricate stuff. I'll be keeping that. Okay, you find it, Pinpointer Girl. Try up here. Try in the plug. Oh, it's in here. Yep, yeah, that's it. A little uh, piece of lead shot. 300 year old lead shot. Bugs are bad, eh? Yeah. I see you remembered to bring your camera today. That's fantastic. You take some pictures of us detecting and I'll put them in the video, okay? Now that is a proper musket ball. That's a big one. That's a good size. They were shooting deer with that one. Oh, we did it. You found a button, Kaylee. I don't know if there's a back on this. And I think there's another. There's two somethings in the hole anyway. And I wish you would really knock it off over there. You're throwing everything right on my leg. <laughs> You're a goofball. <laughs> right up to his ears. <laughs> Mum's not going to be happy with the state we bring you home in, but you're having fun. <laughs> Okay guys, so the big wrap up after two hours of detecting, we've got all kinds of old square nails and iron bits. Don't ask what the iron rod with the knob on the end of it was for. I can only speculate. And there's our two good finds, the two old buttons for today, and all kinds of lead shot, musket balls, and little iron bits. 122 shell, and that's it. So the important question is, did you have fun? Yes. Perfect. Are you going to come again? Yes. Perfect. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. It is pouring rain out today, and I'm kind of re still recovering from wisdom teeth. I did way too much yesterday's video where I found the little cool diamond. Man, did I suffer for all of that talking yesterday. I was up all night just throbbing. So I'm in the garage working on my AT Pro. I'm going to show you guys. i got to do a quick fix to this. I should have took a picture of it before I started, but I'll just show you what I'm doing and why. As you guys know, I run wireless headsets on both my machines. And this is the Teotronics that I use. And you also know if you're running an AT Pro that we have to pay 60 some dollars for a cable. Well, this cable was all nice and neatly zip-tied right here. I had the Teotronics mounted on here. And then you need to have an earphone plug go from the Teotronics, the 3 millimeter jack there, which was not this cable, by the way. It plugs into the Teotronics and then into our $60 cable from Garrett. Well, all these wires were bunched here under where you're, you're grabbing your hand. And my hand would actually hit this, which was in here. And over time, the cable that I had like this got bent where it plugs into the Teotronics. So my headsets, one side would work, and I had to constantly keep plugging it, plugging it in and unplugging it. So we're going to fix that today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this whole cable extension right up the line here. I've removed the grip. We're going to put this inside the grip through... Put the grip back on into where it should go. Maybe we'll throw some gaffer tape around here. And we're going to mount the Teotronics receiver up here on the back side 
of the armrest. I'll show you guys that right now when I'm done through the magic of editing. And there, we're done. Literally a five minute fix, guys. So I took the cable down here and I left some slack. We don't want anything tight because if it's tight, it'll pull on here and you'll get a, a bad cable here and you'll be replacing that $60 connector. So I left a bit of slack, which is not gonna interfere with anything. I ran the cable up through, wrapped it around a couple times, and then I gaffer taped it right up here so that the end is right here. And then the last little connector is this one, which I just had to replace. And all I did was I took my, I had a big pull tie that holds this transceiver on. And there's a screw underneath here that holds this whole handle assembly together. I just put the screw right through the back of this strap. So this is still entirely removable. I just have to push the button here and I can click and remove this whole unit. And uh, that's for if I want to put the machine underwater. I just have to, there's a cap that comes with these cables. Put the cap on here, remove this, and you can still go underwater. The other benefit of doing this, other than saving your cables, which is a huge benefit because I just had to replace one, is that now to charge my unit, there's the charging port right there on the top. So I just lean it against the table here and I plug it in and charge it. And that is the Unfrequented World Rainy Day Quick Project.